All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I wasn't planning on it, but uh, I'm going to do a little bit more lecturing today. Now, before we go into Chapter 6, which is how to code methods and event handlers, all right, I'm going to go back to the payroll program, and I've got payroll original and payroll here. Again, I should be doing what I'm showing you right now, so this is payroll. Let's make this payroll 01. And then this will be payroll 02. Again, I should be using Git, but I haven't explained that yet. And I didn't want to explain that electronically to people, to the new people in the class. All right, so we've got this. Oh, let's see. And it'll have to be payroll 03. All right, so let's open this up. This is the payroll program that we have been working on. <clears throat> and uh, let's see. I guess what we're going to try to change in this. Let's go look in here once. We've got this console program. And in this console program, we did already modularize this. We've got an input first name, an input last name, etc. So we'll go back and look at that in a bit. But let's go back to our GUI example that's here. All right. And <clears throat> <clears throat> let me uh, close. This. All right. And right now in our calculate routine, everything is done right in here. See that? All right. We do have clear the form. So we've got a routine that does that. We've got exit program or not. So we've got a routine that does that. And we've got a show message. But right now in our calculate, we're doing everything inside of the calculate routine. All right. So I'm going to try to change that right now. All right, and I'm going to pull out each one of these routines that we have in here, and I'm going to do them in turn. So let's see. Here we've got our first name, okay? So I'm going to cut that right now, and I'm going to call in here. Um, I may end up getting rid of all three of those variables that are up above, but I'm going to put in here bool keep going equal input first name all right don't worry i'm getting an error because i don't have an input first name right now i'm going to write it right here so private bool input first name all right so what do we have here that that's problems well bool and I'm not returning anything. So for right now, just so this will work, I'll return true. All right, so that get rid of, got rid of that. Now we've got private bool input first name. Did we call that the exact same thing here? Input first name. Bool keep going equals input first name. And we do have input first name here too. What doesn't it like? It says not all paths return a value. So let's fix that. All right, so we either want to return true or false here. So I'm going to re I'm going to create a variable, a Boolean variable called retval, which means return value, and I'm going to set it equal to true. All right, now what I'm going to say in here is if there is no first name, all right, we'll set the focus there. We'll do this, but rather than returning retval right here, no, that's not what we want to do. We want to return retval down here. And I'm going to put the whole thing in, then we'll go over it. All right, so here I'm going to say retval equal false. Now what you have to start, not fossil, you have to start playing computer. All right, what does that mean? Well, we come into this and we say, keep going. 
Boolean keep going equals input first name, which means input first name is either going to return true, meaning there was a first name, or it's going to return false. So let's again look at the routine. All right, so this is our return value. We're assuming that it's true, everything is good. But if it turns out that we entered no first name, we didn't enter anything. Then we want to put the cursor there, give them a message that says you must enter a first name, set our return value to false, and then return false. If there is a first name, we go right from here to here. Now that's kind of nice. So let's do this just to make this a little bit easier for us. I'm going to write this again, and this is going to be input last name. All right, so check for no last name. If last name is empty, txt last name dot focus, you must enter a last name, no last name input. Okay, so we've got two of them done already. Now, we're not calling this right now. Notice this is not gray, but this is gray because we're not calling the input last name. So we're doing this. And if, what we want to see is if keep going equal equal true, which is totally fine to say. But there's a shortcut for saying this. And that is all you have to say is that. So if that's true, we know that we've got a valid first name. So we can say keep going equals input last name. But if this return false, we're just going to say else return. We're done. All right. Okay, so now we don't need this anymore. I already rewrote this. All right, so now we're down to here. And if keep going, all right, then we want to say keep going equal input hours worked. We're getting the error because we haven't written that. Let's grab this. Okay. Again, private pool pool input hours worked. And we've got this. Now, don't worry about these errors. We're going to get rid of them right away. All right. So just like before, we're going to say, String hours equal txt hours work dot text. All right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say bool result, and we're going to try to take that whatever they put in there, and if it was if it can be converted into a number, we're going to throw it into hours. All right. So the only thing we have to change here, really. Again, we have this bool ret val equal true like we did before. And this will say ret val equal false. And this will say return ret val. So we've got that done now. All right. So what's left? Well, I'm going to grab this routine we just wrote that inputs the hours worked, and I'm going to copy all of it. And I'm going to paste it in again. Now I get an error because this one now should be hourly rate. All right. So this will now be txt hour, hourly rate. And this will be just hr for hourly rate. And that will go into rate.
So now we've got that done. So we now have gone in here and we don't need this anymore. All right. So now what have we done? Okay, we don't need any of this junk here anymore. So let me get rid of that. So we're saying input the first name, which is going to return true if we put in a first name and false if we did not. If we did put in a first name, so a first name was input. Then we want to input a last name. But otherwise, oops, I'm going to go back to there. No first name input inputted i guess so a first name was inputted and no first name was inputted okay so now we go down and we look for a last name so if there was a last name then a last name was inputted All right, so we can now input in hours worked. Otherwise, there was no, we just want to return, and we want to return because no last name was inputted. All right, so that's the hours worked. <clears throat> and again, if keep going that means that we did a valid hours worked was inputted so now we can say keep going equal input hourly rate all right, otherwise, so else, again, what do we know? We can return because no hours worked or invalid. Let's put uh, OOR, out of range, hours worked, was inputted. Finally, the last thing we want to do here, now we've inputted the hourly rate. Okay, so again, if, keep going, and again, what does that mean? A valid hourly rate was inputted. So if that's the case, we now want to come in and calculate the gross pay. Don't worry, it'll give me an error, but I'll fix that in a moment. Otherwise, I want to return, and I want to return because either no hourly rate or out of range hourly rate was inputted now this is everything i need to calculate the gross pay all right that's everything i need and hours and rate all this stuff is global because it's all defined outside of here so i don't need to pass it so i can grab everything everything that i have here all right and now down at near the bottom here, after input hourly rate, I'm going to do another private void, and I'm going to call it calculate gross, gross pay. And there that is. All right. 
So what's left? Well, if we look in here, as it says, add to our new final totals. So let's call in here if in fact this I shouldn't even have to do this I'm already calculating the gross base so um, update final totals now we don't have that written yet so we're getting an error so let's come down here and write that right underneath calculate gross pay right here private void update final totals paste that in now i'm looking here oops and let's see no errors that's pretty fantastic but let's run it and then we'll go back and look at everything and put some work comments in here etc so let's do a file save all and let's run it now if we leave out a first name no first name input you must enter a first name good all right no last name input you must enter a last name good hours worked empty or out of range all right so it says it's got to be 0 to 84 let's try a negative number hours worked out of range good uh, let's try something more than 84 all right we're still stuck in there that's exactly what should happen let's put a 40 in here now we should get an hourly rate message hourly rate out of range again let's try a negative value it shouldn't take it and it doesn't let's try something over 99.99 and it doesn't take it 25 calculate a thousand one one thousand one thousand clear all right we'll say mark gray worked 50 hours makes 20 dollars an hour he made 1100 dollars all right and my 1000 that i had before plus 1100 is 2100 divided by two everything's working good so let's look at what we did this is the same program we've been working on it's a fairly simplistic c-sharp payroll application all right we asked the user for the his or her first name last name hours worked which had to be within range and hourly rate which had to be within range we used string variables for the names numeric variables for the hours worked and for the hourly rate all right all right we used constants again for hours rate so we had a min rate and a max rate we had a min hours and a max hours those there shouldn't be really any surprises there all right in that stuff okay all right so all constants and all variables are now global they have been meaning we defined all of our constants and all of the variables that we're using here outside of any routine so outside of any function also known as a method so we come in here and we start writing as it says this executes when the calculate button is clicked all right so set keep going to true if input first name returns true and set it to false all right so set keep going to true all right in fact i shouldn't even say that i should say set keep going to input last name if 
input first name returns true. Exactly what I want to do. All right. So here, what I'm doing, in fact, that comment belongs not here, but it belongs here. All right. So here we're setting keep going to input first name. All right. So if keep going, a first name was inputted. All right. i.e. input first name returned true all right otherwise no first name was inputted i.e. input first name returned false all right so now we want to set keep going to input hours worked if input last name was true. All right. So again, No last name was inputted, i.e. input last name returned false. A valid one was, i.e., whoops, try that again, i.e. input last name returned true. All right, and we're just working our way down here. So set keep going to input hourly rate if input hours worked returns true. All right. So, no hours worked or OOH hours worked. In other words, Input hourly rate, return false. All right, here, input hourly rate, return true. And then finally, We've already read. Already read. Last name. It's worked. Otherwise, all right. Input hours worked. Return true. This is again hours worked. 
And finally, this is hourly rate, and so is that. All right. All right, all I did, I took the same code we had, but I moved it around and put everything in its own routine. All right, so returns true if a first name was input, returns false if no first name should say name was inputted okay and this next one returns true if a last name was inputted and returns false if no last name was inputted then here returns true. This is a little bit different if a valid hours worked. In other words, 0 through 84 was inputted. Returns false if invalid hours worked was inputted. This will return true if a valid hourly rate, meaning that it was between 0 and 99.99 was inputted, and returns false if an invalid hourly rate was inputted. All right. So, This right here, calculate gross pay. If employee worked less than or equal to 40 hours, gross pay equals hours times rate. If employee worked greater than 40 hours, gross pay equal forty times the rate, because it's forty hours, plus hours minus 40 times rate times 1.5. Now I may be off here. I may be missing a uh, paren or something. One, two, three, one, two, three. Maybe I'm not. All right. And I'm just going to say basically what the thing is. Update all final totals. Now, this is already getting big. The thing is 250 lines long, if not longer. 255 lines. All right. But a lot of it, I've been purposely putting in a lot of comments in here. So hopefully you can figure out what's going on. All right. And it, it does appear as though it works. Now, the other one that we have been doing so let me close this and close this. And the other one that we did was this one, which was our console app. This already is modularized. Notice it's calling six different routines there. 
All right, one to do the first name, one to do the last name, one to do the hours worked, one to do the hourly rate, one to calculate the gross pay, and one to print out all the employee info. Okay, now, instead of print out employee info in here, let's see, let's look once. So this is, keep program, or keep user stuck in this routine until she or he enters a inputs a first name. Now keep them in here until they enter a last name. Keep them in here until they input a valid hour, oops, valid hours worked, i.e. a number between a number greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to 84. All right. Then for this one, greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to 99.99, .99, this is going to calculate the gross pay just like we did before. Here, I could have done this in another routine, but add to final totals. All right, and then we print out everything. So with this one, it basically, again, console means that it is pretty much the same as our GUI program, except in this console app here, and let's make this our active project. Okay. It's, it's not GUI. Now, if you want, we could get rid of all these clears that we have here. All right, it's good. Like, in fact, let's do that. All right, so let's see. We'll clear. Um, let's see. Okay, so input the first name. I will clear there. All right, and then we will get, we will take all these clears that are in here and for now, comment them out. It's going to look a lot cleaner this way. All right. If you don't know what I mean, watch. All right. And when we get down to print out all this stuff, now we will clear. All right. So file, save all. Let's run this again. Look a lot different now. Enter your first name, Jeff. Enter your last name, Scott. Enter the hours worked. Well, these should be both tabbed out another time. But that's fine. 40. Enter your hourly rate. 25. All right. And it's got everything in there. That's good. That looks real nice. All right. Now, I don't need these anymore. And when I'm putting in your first name and last name, I want one more tab. I'm just trying to line stuff up. You don't have to do this. I'm a little anal that way I guess let's run it again all right enter your first name Mary enter your last name Smith enter your hours worked now if I do put something out of range here so 100 I get an error it just tells you to do it again all right if I took put something negative it still tells us to do it again and 50 now let's do this out of range All right, so all that worked. Okay, so everything in here is looking good. Let's put in one more employee. So Bob King, Bob worked uh, 40 hours and Bob makes $40 an hour. All right, there you go. 
So we now have two working versions of this. All right, that didn't really take that long. It took a little over a half an hour. All right, but what I'm going to do is stop right here and then go back and we're going to actually go over chapter six. So I'll be back with that in just a couple minutes.